just one question I have. You told me, we heard about uh, that the Vedas say that don't make any images of the God. Yeah. Whoever worships anything uh, which has been created throws himself in darkness, right? The difference between Bhagwan and Allah is that Allah says that if you worship anyone apart from me, I will punish you forever and ever and I will not spare you of this sin. But nowhere in Hinduism's books would you see that Bhagwan is saying that if you worship anything apart from me, you will be put in Narak, which is uh, the Hindi word for uh, hell, forever and ever. Now, what, why I am saying that to you is, the concept of God in Islam, Christianity and Judaism is the same in which he feels bad if anyone worships anything else apart from him. But the concept of the other side of the religions, which is Hinduism, Buddhism or those sides, the concept of God there, I think, is more, the God of those religions is more large-hearted because he doesn't say to you that I'm going to put you in hell if you don't worship me. Although, although I understand that it is wrong to worship idols, it is wrong to worship created things. But I do feel that because that, uh, I, I somehow feel that, you know, basically God, there is nothing like Him, right? So why in the Quran or the Bible or the Jews scripture, we are attributing a human uh, feeling to God that, let us say, my father gives me everything, he gives me all the money and I give that money to the poor people, right? Now, one day, if I forget my father, yeah, so my father will feel bad. But this is a human nature. God is more large-hearted than that. Even if I don't worship him, he should have no problems. You know, he should not put me to hell because that's egoistic. Egoism is a part of human nature, not of God, is what I feel, according to my... uh, Understanding. Brother Rahul is an old friend of mine, mashallah. Whenever I come to Dubai, no question answer session goes without him asking a question. He's following me since many years. When I came in 2005, when I came last year, and yesterday night, we had a good session for a couple of hours. And though he didn't mention his name, he's Rahul, mashallah. And we pray that may Allah guide him. Inshallah, may Allah give hidayah. And he asks very good questions. Always difficult questions, very good questions. I like it, it's a challenge for me. He asked me new question. I like challenges. And always I say he asked a good question. This is one of my last questions, sir. Uh, one of my last questions. Last question before you accept Islam. One of my last questions. <laughs> before you accept Islam. Clarify this. Uh, it just struck me, actually. I was... He told me he will not accept Islam in public, so I don't know problem. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Will so you I... clarify me on this? I'll clarify with you. And I won't ask you to accept Islam in public. We have done that yesterday. Sir, Islam is a glorious religion and I am, it's given me a lot of peace and I can say many good things about it, but please clarify. And you told, else. I'll clarify. You told me you have spent more time studying Islam than what you spend time in getting your degree of engineering. It is right. Yes. That's right. And I enjoy it more. Therefore, I enjoy your question also. The brother asked a very good question, very attacking, very tricky, difficult question that he understands that all the religions, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, say there's no God except one God, don't make images, don't make idols, but Islam goes a step further. He will forgive any other sin except the sin of shirk. Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 48, Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse 116. But in Hinduism, nowhere does it say that if you do shirk, Allah will not forgive you. Before I ask you a question about large-heartedness, Nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit a murder, Allah will not forgive you. Brother, nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit murder, Allah will not forgive you. Does it mean that I will go and commit murder? Brother. Repeat again, sorry. Nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit murder, though it is the second largest sin in Islam, in the major sins, number two is committing murder of an innocent human being. Yes. After shirk is murder. Though the Quran says in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse 32 that if anyone kills any innocent human being unless it be for murder or for creating corruption in the land it is as though you have killed all of humanity. But nowhere does the Quran say that if you commit murder Allah will not forgive you. 
Allah will never forgive you. Does it mean that I will go and commit murder? No. Yeah, enough. Same way, when the Vedas don't mention that if you don't do shirk, Allah will not forgive you, you should not do shirk. I understand, I understand. Very good. You are an understanding person. I'll come to the large added one afterwards. I haven't answered your full question. I've only answered the first part of your first question. I'll come to your large heartedness afterwards. Yeah, I mean... I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll come to it. That's fine. Yeah. But I like, you know, cutting down the questions so that you understand better. Yes. Or if you understand, the other people also should understand. You know, you're an intelligent person, I know that. Sure. Mashallah, engineer done from UK. That's what he told me yesterday. Now, coming to your part of large heartedness. Yeah. That in Islam, if you don't do this, I'll punish you. That is a human nature. That if the father gives money to the son, son gives in charity, tomorrow the son doesn't ask about the father, so father feels bad. It's human nature, I agree with you. God is far superior, I agree with you. Yes. So why does God feel bad? Yes. Very good question, very intelligent question. Inshallah, you'll get convinced. I won't ask you to accept Islam in public. Oh, sure. <laughs> that we have done that yesterday. Yes. The Quran says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require you, you require him. Now coming to the question. Now I'm making your question more easy. Mm -hmm. Why we have to say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest? Allah asks you to say Allah Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Tomorrow if you don't say Allah is the greatest, do you think Allah will become less? No. No. Yeah. Whether you say or not, Allah is already the greatest. Irrespective whether you say or not, it will make no difference, not even an iota or difference. He is already the greatest. He will remain irrespective whether you say or not. Why does he ask you to say that is the question. The question is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the human psychology. For example, your mother has a heart attack. And now, you have heard of a very famous heart specialist in the world. If you know he's famous, he will give you some advice for your mother. Another person who's unknown, he comes and gives you advice. Whose advice will you follow? Uh, repeat again, sorry. Uh, if? if your mother has a heart attack. Yeah. There's a person who you know is the most famous heart specialist yeah, in the world. I would follow the advice of the specialist. Why? Because you know he's number one, he's most famous. Yeah. So the reason Allah asks you to praise him is not for his benefit, it's for your benefit. Because the moment you praise Allah, you will follow his advice. Agreed. By following his advice, Allah will not benefit, you will benefit. Yes. By the doctor giving advice to you, he will not benefit. Yes, you may give him fees, so that way he'll benefit. You aren't giving any fees to Allah. Yes. So Allah doesn't benefit anything. But at the moment you praise Him, it is human. When you say, Allah is the most wise, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the most merciful, most wise, ah, He gives advice, I'll follow. Most greatest, I'll follow Him. Most merciful, I'll follow Him. So you say all these praises not to benefit Him, to benefit yourself. Agreed. Yes. So when you worship Him, mm -hmm. it does not benefit Him, it benefits you. Yes. When you follow the advice of the doctor, mm -hmm. it will benefit if you give Him fees. Yes. Yes. You don't give any fish to Allah. Yes. It benefits you. Yes. So same way, Allah is large-hearted. Yes. By punishing you, hmm. do you think he will benefit? No. By punishing, he becomes... A, I is the come, uh, coming to it, Brother Rahul. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me complete my answer. Sure, sure. Yeah. By punishing you, he will not benefit. But he is giving you a fear. Why? If you have alcohol, he will punish you. If you have drugs, he'll punish you. Whether you have drugs or what difference does it make to him? Now, if he says, okay, don't have drugs, but if you have drugs, I will not punish you. Then will you have drugs or not? You will have. If I give an examination, right to... No, I won't have. If, I, if I'm convinced it's wrong for me, I won't have. Ah, I don't need that fear of the hell. Right. The fear of the hell I have to be put in my mind yes, to yes. avert me. God convinces people in different ways. Some people with reason and logic. You are a logical person, you are convinced with logic. Some people want fear, some people want punishment, some people want reward. There are three, four types of ways which Allah speaks. You get convinced with reason and logic, you are like me. Yeah. You are like me. Yes, yes. Some people, they are not convinced with reason and logic. Ah, leave logic. Ha, ah, I'll get reward, I'll do it. I'll get punishment, I'll stay away. So, if Lekin such kya hai? Hota kya hai? Reality mein, uh, does it, is the fear, is, is it reality? Wo, yes, hoega? yes, Put, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Reality is that the hellfire is there and the punishment is there, Brother, right? Let, let me complete the answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, will you allow me to complete the answer or you will? Yes, please. Let me complete, I'll give you a chance. 
I'll give you a chance to say that you are convinced. Yes. But before I complete my answer, you are interjecting. Sure, sure. Yes, yeah, please. After I complete, I'll give you a chance and ask you. Sure, yeah. Now, there's a teacher taking an examination. Two plus two is how much? Four. Convinced? Now, there are some people, the teacher says, okay, now in the examination, those who write correctly will get plus point, will pass. Those who don't write correctly will fail. Now, when the teacher is telling hundreds of things, it's difficult for everyone to remember. But if you want to remember, you write. If you write correct, I'll pass you. If you write wrong, I'll fail you. So now the student starts memorizing. He starts like you passed your engineering. You are afraid of failing. Yes. If you wouldn't have studied, you would have failed. So if teacher says, no problem, even if you write wrong, I will give you part degree. Will you study? No. Ah, mm -hmm. though you are logical, yeah. you understand Boyle's law, you understand trigonometry, you understand chemistry, but to remember, you have to stay awake, you have to slog. Teacher says, no problem, you understood? You write in the examination, right or wrong, two plus two is three, I will pass you. Will you study? Well, it depends. I won't, but probably someone who is more sensitive I'm would study you. to learn some knowledge. Correct. If the teacher says, now your aim is to get the degree. Yeah. Once you understand, if you fail, if you fail, you won't get the degree. Yeah. So here, Almighty God speaks logically. Some people logically doesn't make a difference whether hellfire is or heaven is there. Other people, you do it, you get a reward. Like when you speak to your child, sometimes you speak logically, sometimes you say, you know, I'll give you a chocolate. Yes. Sometimes, ek lafa marunga. Yeah, yeah. I will yeah. give you one slap. Yeah. So yeah. this is what God knows the psychology of the human being. He's our creator. Sometimes logic, sometimes reasoning, sometimes reward, sometimes punishment. But once he says he has to follow, he can't lie. Once he says, he has to follow. So he's trying to convince you, suppose your son. Yeah, yeah. I know you're not married. Yeah. I know you're not married. Inshallah, one day when you get married, and if your son. Yes. And your son, Inshallah, I'll marry a Muslim, Inshallah. Yes, Inshallah. <laughs> so your son, when you have a son, yeah. five years old, he wants to jump from 10th floor. You say, my son, don't jump, you'll die. I want to jump. You know, you will die. No problem, I want to jump. One slap you'll give him, right or wrong? Yes. You'll tell him, I'll slap you. Yes. Yet if he wants to jump, you'll slap him. A yes. father is cruel to be kind. Is your intention to hurt him? No. Your intention is to hurt him literally so that he prevents from the bigger hurt. Yes. So here if he says, no, no, I'm only acting. Maybe for some little time you'll think I'll punish you and you don't punish him. But if he wants to jump, you'll not wait till he jumps. You will give him one tight slap. The so same way God here, he tells you this is good, this is bad, this is reward, this is punishment. And once he says something, he's honest. In Islam, God is the most kind. He wants the human being to improve. The other God, okay, no problem. Even if you write wrong, I'll pass you. What kind of a teacher is this? Suppose tomorrow, there's a student studying with you. He writes wrong answers. You slog. You stay awake in the night. This person plays hooky, enjoys, writes everything wrong. And the teacher says, both get first class first. Will you be happy with the teacher? No. Why? You are a very unkind person. Mm. Very cruel. Mm. Unkind. Not a good human being. Mm. I am wrong. Because you believe in justice. So besides God being kind and merciful, he is also just. Imagine someone rapes your sister, rapes your mother. God says, no problem, I'll forgive. On the day of judgment, won't you tell God? Why no, no, that's okay. No, that's okay. I'm, I'm talking about wait, God wait. being egoistic on his own He's self. He's not egoistic at all. No, but he's saying, if you, if you do shit, then I will put you in hellfire forever and ever. I'm not saying no. that he should not punish wrong deeds. But he is putting on his own self that if you associate partners with me, Along with worshipping me, if you worship someone else, even then I will not forgive you. That's the right thing. That's, because that's if, egoism. If the doctor says, yes. if suppose the heart specialist tells your mother, see this is a good thing, have only this medicine, nothing else. Someone else says, okay, have this medicine also. So that heart specialist tells you, if you mix it with something else, your mother will die. So will you listen to somebody else or not? Will you listen or not? Art specialist saying, don't have anything else except this sorbit rate. Keep it below your tongue. Yes. Now another doctor comes, you know, I'm a very good doctor. You don't know him also. Mm. Will I you will listen, listen to, to heart specialist? Correct. Yes. Heart specialist specialized, but God is a big heart specialist. 
So heart specialist, you want to follow. You don't want to follow your creator who's created your heart. What no, no, kind no, no, of no, no, no. Sir, wait, sir, wait, wait, here, wait, here. wait, 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 wait. Let me complete. Yes. Let me complete. Yes, yes, yes. So you being logical, yeah. when you want to follow the heart specialist, when the heart specialist tell you, don't listen to anyone else because they have told you the total truth. That heart specialist can be wrong because he's a human being. Almighty God, when he says, do not worship anyone else besides me. He knows that if you think somebody else is also the greatest. Hmm. And if you follow and follow something wrong, it will harm you. God does not want to see to it that his creations are harmed. He is going out of the way to give you an ultimate warning. Other sins, maybe I will forgive. Hmm. That is one type of murder, is one type of sin, very wrong, second largest. But one, if you worship somebody else, you can do anything. You can start murdering, you can start having drugs, you can start raping. It's too dangerous. Hmm. This is the guidance. It is complete. Because he is the creator, he knows no one else is the creator. Now someone else tries to behave like a creator when God knows no one else can create you, it is very dangerous. That's the reason he says that following advice, worshipping anyone, obeying anyone as the creator, not obeying normally. Normally you want to obey a father, no problem. Obey a mother, no problem. Going against the commandments of Almighty God. Worshipping that, that is what I am trying to find out. Is that the right God? Who is saying that if you associated partners with me, I will never forgive this sin. You are taking, it's a catch 22. I am questioning whether a God who thinks like that, is that the correct God? Correct God. You are saying, you Suppose are saying he is the correct God, hence why? he knows. Why, why, why? Yes. I have checked up with science. This Quran passes yes. the test. When I put science to your Hindu scriptures, it fails. Yes. When I put science to Bible, it fails. Mm. So even if I agree with you, with my earlier question, mm. maybe this is ambiguous, fine. 80% mm. is proved to be 100% correct. 20% mm. is ambiguous. Inshallah, logically, even this will be right. If I have to put that way. But the other way, if a doctor who solved... Stronger solid, argument would be that 100% is correct. 100%, 100 of it is proof that it is correct. If 20% ambiguous is there... I'll tell you one thing, brother. Your mind hasn't reached that level. My mind hasn't reached that level. Right. The science hasn't reached that level. Maybe 100 years afterward, 1000 years after, it will be proved 100% correct. We are limited. The problem is in you and me, not in the Quran. Similarly, but a person who is very powerful, a person who is a heart specialist, he knows his stuff very well. He'll be sure. Do this, nothing else. A person who's not sure, okay, have this medicine also, have that medicine also. So person who's cocksure of himself, like the Creator Almighty God, he will give this commandment. Now he's cocksure. You are not cocksure about him that he's the Creator. Yes. Once you're cocksure, you'll follow. I'm cocksure that this is the word of Almighty God. You aren't. Yes. So once your research gets complete, Yes. You know very well that the other scriptures don't pass the test. Yes. I challenge you to get any scripture that you know of, which is even close to the Quran. No, this is the strongest scripture that I, I, I did that so, for sure. So when you know, yeah. I can't ask you to accept because you know we spoke yesterday. Right, okay. But when you know it is the thing, then the ego is in you, not in Almighty God. The ego no, is in you. <laughs> I don't have ego. And I pray to I, Almighty I told God. You all the ones I have read, this is the strongest. I yeah? pray to Almighty God. You know, because I love you, Rahul. Yes, I love you too. I love you. That's the reason I pray to Almighty God to give Hida. You don't have to proclaim. You asked me yesterday, do I have to proclaim? I said, no, you don't have to proclaim. Yes. So I think that you are a person who submit your will to God. And may God guide you. Yes. And may you get a good submitting Muslim life partner. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.